Chances are, if you're watching this video, you've confirmed a transaction before on MetaMask. And then after you confirm it, you're just sitting there like, okay, now what? Where did my money go? Where did this swap go? Well, in today's video, guys, I'm gonna show you how to use Etherscan and the Blockchain Explorer. This will relate to Phantom Scan, this will relate to Ava Scan, the Optimism Explorer, and even the Arbitrum Explorer. This works for several different, they won't match exactly, but it will be similar. By the end of this short video, you'll understand how to read a Blockchain Explorer as well as use it to your advantage. Let's go ahead and explain a couple of terms on here. Obviously, this is just the Ethereum price. This tells you the current price at its current date. This tells you how many total transactions as well as the total transactions per second. This is the gas price. This is the difficulty to mine Ethereum. When it goes to proof of stake, it will be different. And this shows you the current Ethereum market cap. This is also the historical transactions on Ethereum network in the past 14 days. Now let's go and get into some tools. Now let's go and get into reading the block explorer as well as a transaction. This is a completely random address that I just selected. And this is the information we have on it. As you can see here, you have a little tab up here. This just signifies that this particular address has money on 14 different chains. They have some on Etherscan, Binance Scan, Polygon Scan, Phantom Scan, all these different scans. In fact, if you wanted to view their balances, you just hit BSC Scan and it'll take you to the Binance Scan. It will actually open up all of their tokens and it has a similar look as Etherscan does. Now let's say we wanna go ahead and look at the balances that's in this address and see what they're holding in their wallet. On the Ethereum network, all I have to do is click their wallet and it will open up a new tab for me. Under this new tab, it's a clean, sleek UI. You can see they're holding some Polymath, some Thalys, some Staked Aave, Ethereum, OMG, Chi Gas token. You can see they're holding several different assets. And you can see the balance of all the assets in their wallets is about $808. Their net worth is about 0.41 ETH. They are not LPing any assets on the Ethereum network, but that doesn't mean they aren't LPing assets on other chains. Let's go and go back to the address page. This is the history of all their different transactions. They've made a total of 9,148 transactions to date, with the latest one being 52.25 ETH. It looks like they were depositing to Arbitrum. And if you click on this address, it will open up the transaction details. This is the transaction hash. This is basically the receipt for this transaction. You also have the block. Now this block has several different transaction hashes in it. So clicking it, we can see there's 254 different transactions. 162 were just contract interactions. So going back to the original transaction, we can see here the timestamp happened two days and four hours ago. So this guy deployed some ETH to Arbitrum, a total of 52.25 to Arbitrum, two days and four hours ago. We have this from address. This is the user's wallet address. Then you have the contract. This is the contract for deploying Ethereum assets or Ethereum onto Arbitrum. As you can see here inside the contract, it transferred Ether from the Arbitrum delayed inbox to the Arbitrum bridge. And if you wanna see what's going on on the Arbitrum bridge, all you have to do is click on it. It will take you to the bridge wallet address and you can see this is the Arbitrum deployer. And you can see a list of some of the different assets in the wallet. Most of these look like they were just airdrop tokens or scam tokens. So this is mainly used as a contract address. Then you have the balance of Ether that they deposited, which was about $100,000 worth of ETH. And they paid a gas fee of $4.28. Pretty cheap. If you want to see more, you can click to see more and this will break it down. This will show you the gas limit. This will show you the gas fees. So they paid about 22.8 guay and a max of 31, and they gave a priority fee of 1.5, which means that of that transaction, $4 worth of Ether was burnt because this is the base fee. Remember, the base fees are burnt, and the priority fees, these go to the miners. So this was just a simple bridge transaction. Now let's go ahead and take a look at another transaction. Instead of just deploying to a bridge, let's look at a swap transaction. As you can see here, this is a Paraswap. Paraswap is basically a swapper. So let's go and expand to see what this looks like. This is your transaction hash, basically your receipt. You got your block height, your timestamp, and then it shows what happened. This guy swapped 1,446 hop for 0.087 ETH. 
He then took this ETH all in the same transaction and swapped it for USDC. As you can see here, this is the routing options. It took his hop and it swapped it to ETH and then this ETH was swapped to USDC. The whole transaction cost him $12.77 at a gas price of 23 GUI. This is when ETH was about $1,400. So this $12 price is actually what it is now. So if you want to see what it was previously, it was $9.44. You simply just click on the transaction to see it. The next transaction we want to analyze is a contract transaction. So let's take, for example, the Olympus DAO transaction. This is the approval transaction. So we'll go ahead and take a click on this. This is the contract address. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what this looks like. As you can see here, there's approvals, there's transfers. This is just the contract address. You can see this is the GOM and the price of the GOM token. And you can see the different assets that are in this wallet. If you wanna go directly to the contract, usually this is important to use something like this if the website's down or the UI is down. You can look at read and write contract. So you can see here you have the approval, you have the burn, you have the decrease allowance. There's different features inside of this contract. Basically how this would work is you connect your MetaMask, put in the address, which is your address, and then the amount you're willing to spend. Remember, this isn't just going to be like one, two, three. You actually have to have different decimals. And usually going into the different discords and asking, hey, how can I do this? Or how many decimals do I need? Usually they're more than happy to help. Now let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of other features I really like about Etherscan. This is under the more tab. My favorite one is this token approvals page. When you go to the token approvals, you can connect your web three wallet and it will show you all the different approvals that you have. This is important to review and revoke the token approvals. The reason for this is if you're approving a malicious contract or any website and you do an infinite approval for a certain token, if that project decides to rug, they can take all of the tokens in your wallet. So make sure you periodically go and reject token approvals, especially with infinite approval. This is the gas tracker. You can find this under the tools as well. You can see this is token approvals and then you have gas tracker right here. The gas tracker just shows you the current gas going rate. That way when you're sending it out on MetaMask, you aren't like, yeah, let me do a five way. And then you're just gonna be sitting there twiddling your thumbs waiting for it to approve. You also have a NFT tracker. This basically shows the different buys and sells of NFTs going on in the marketplace. So you can take a look at this. This also shows the different mints that are going on. You're like, man, what's the next big NFT? Well, you can see these are the different NFTs that are being minted. And if the project has a website, for example, Ethereum name service, you can click on it and it will take you to the main page on this. You can go to the contract address for ENS Deployer. You then have the token tracker page. You can click on this and this will actually take you to the website. This one has its own website and this is on Etherscan. So you can hit open official website and it will take you to ENS domains. Not all projects and protocols have this. Something to keep in mind. Next, you have the DEX tracker. This basically tracks all the different transactions specifically for tokens on Ethereum. And you can see these are the different tokens that are being traded. So if you want to see which DEXs are eating the world, you can click on the DEX pie chart and this will show you the DEXs that are taking most of the market share and having most of the volume. As you can see here, Uniswap V2 and Uniswap V3 are a vast majority of the share with SushiSwap following right behind. This is on Ethereum network. It is different for other chains. You can also see the popular trading pairs by going to the trading pairs and seeing which ones are doing well. This will show you the top liquidity for that pair as well as the market price for the pair. You can see the token pairs with the most liquidity is Wrap Bitcoin and Ethereum. Now to see statistics on ETH, you can see the market data, the price, the total supply, the market cap chart. You can see the supply growth, daily transactions, there's several different tools you can use on this. Now, my favorite tool to use is DBank. This makes it much easier to take a look at different wallet addresses and it provides a more clean UI so you can see what's up. As you can see, this random wallet address I searched, he has assets on Ethereum, Binance Smart Chain, Gnosis, Polygon, Phantom, Kronos, Moon River, but most of his assets are on Arbitrum. If I wanted to see what's in his wallet, I can see this is what's in his wallet. And if I specifically want to go to Arbitrum, I can click on Arbitrum 
and it will show me what's there. As you can see, this guy mostly has his ETH just sitting in his wallet right now. Of course, this doesn't show all of the farms he has on there, but it shows several of them. And you can see the history of his wallet, all the transactions that he's made. So it looks like he's trading on GMX. You can also see their NFTs by clicking on the NFT section and seeing what's in their wallet. Now, one other feature that's pretty cool is if you wanted to message this guy, you can click on this message chart and it will take you to the block scan. If you wanted to message a guy, all you got to do is connect your wallet and you can message back and forth with these guys. After you connect your wallet, you can simply say, hey, this is someone else's address. So I'm just going to give them a hey and see if they respond back. Anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if it brought any value to you guys, make sure you smash up the like, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification. That way you guys are notified every time we make a new one. I like to talk about DeFi, cryptocurrency, show you how to use this weird crypto stuff. Anyways, Proverbs chapter 12, verses 11. Those who work their land will have abundant food, but those who chase fantasies have no sense. Work your land, get some food.